Hello everybody, I just was popping on to break down this scene that you may have seen on my Instagram or social medias. I thought I'd just show you what my blender scene looks like because I heard some of you were interested. So let's jump into that. So this is the blender scene. It's pretty simple actually. Here I'll go to a bigger view. Um, we have a moon. Here I'll, there we go. Um, the moon and the water and that's it. The water is being generated from an ocean modifier. Um, I just set the settings how I wanted to uh, with a little bit of foam. This is just all coming out of the modifier. And I have the time being driven by this uh, frame divided by 25. So if I play the timeline, it just scrolls slowly. And that's just all built into the ocean modifier. So nothing really super special there. The moon. It's kind of interesting. Um, I just if we go to UV editing. I just projected it. The sphere. Uh, it's a cube, cube sphere. Um, I don't know exactly how you get it. Round cube is how I generated it, and I just projected it onto an image of the moon. So pretty simple. That's how I got the color. There's also a lamp. Um, there's a sun lamp in the middle of that. That's that's adding the lighting from it. So there is. A bit of it is an emission uh, shader so it does glow but the sun lamp is actually doing all the lighting on the water um, to get this like reflection right here uh, let's see if I turn off the sun lamp yeah uh, it doesn't look like it's in the right spot but uh, yeah that this highlight looks like over here is the sun lamp so um, that just adds a little bit to it that's the moon, pretty simple. It's on a curve that's animated, so the moon actually moves, but uh, in the final image, you can't really tell that it's moving. Like, it just feels like the camera moves, so... Um, I don't know if that's not really necessary, but I had some fun with uh, doing a path animation on the curve right here, and just animating it, putting where I wanted the moon at the start and where I wanted it at the end. I thought about making this a looping animation, so that's kind of why I was playing with that. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, so the water is the main thing, um, and it's all really just in the materials. Um, I do have 25 render resolution. This is only 7 right here, so I can probably bump this up to like 10 before my viewport gets kind of laggy. Um, I'll put it back to 7 so we can actually look at it in shading. So this project actually originated from the idea, I was watching a video about vector fields and how they could be used to do motion. So I actually started with this uh, image I just downloaded on the internet um, of a flow, flow motion, flow map, I guess is what they're called. And I followed a tutorial to do all this math stuff, so we could pretty much ignore it. Um, but all this does is... Um, it takes these noise textures right here, and based on the flow map, it distorts the noise texture. So that's just, that's what that is. And the noise texture here is driving a, uh, driving these, like, areas of high contrast. I just clamped it. And that's being combined with the uh, Ocean Modifier's foam uh, vertex color. So I just made a vertex uh, color called COL. That's the default. Um, and that's being written by the foam of the Ocean Modifier, which is just basically, I think it's just the peaks. Oh, it looks like it's not coming through. Oh, it might not come through. Oh, there it is. It doesn't come through when it's playing. Oh, there, yeah. So this is the foam vertex color it just it comes through as the peaks of all the waves so I'm just multiplying uh, this one by this one to get just a slightly dimmer this one <laughs> uh, flow map so you don't really need all this flow map stuff because oh, in the end all all I have is the the texture coordinates going to a scale node just for size going to a Voronoi with these like little speckles that's being added to the flow map for texture let's see yeah just this so that as it moves you just see these like little highlights pop up 
and that's based on the flow map and the waves. So that was all really that's like what got me started on this project is doing this like uh, these like waves of little dots. Um, if I can get a good view of that. Anyway, um, and then I, that's just being put into a uh, principal with as the emission strength being multiplied by 24 and then this is just some basic settings to make it look like water so really the water is all of this with a little bit of glow this like blue glow on top that's supposed to be kind of like the um i think there's a phenomenon in in ocean where there's a certain plankton or something that um is bioluminescent when it gets disturbed as a defense mechanism and so i was kind of doing the thing where at the peaks of the waves where it's most being disturbed it it high it lights up and uh there's this flow map to just give it some sh uh, more shape other than that because yeah if i didn't have the peaks of the waves it would be way too crazy weird and then if i didn't have the flow map it would just be on every single peak of every wave so i just made it a little bit subtler with combining those two and this could really this doesn't have to be this flow map thing um this like a breakup pattern you could use the wave the wave tops here and then break it up with just a noise texture that doesn't move like this or even just animate the seed if you go to a four dimensional you could um type in hashtag frame and that'll just animate the seed value of that so um that that would probably be enough I, the whole flow map thing was just the idea that got this started um, and then the, really the rest of it is lighting. So I already went over the moon. I already went over the water. It's just an ocean modifier. Um, animation and lighting. So the camera is animated uh, with, let's see, if I select the, it's got some focus distance. Uh, so I animated the Z location and the X and Y rotation for, um, and I put uh, these noise modifiers on it. So, um, you can just add one keyframe and then go to modifiers in this. Uh, I think it's N. If you hit N, it pulls up this window. And you can just add. There's plenty of modifiers, and this is a noise. So it just generates random things, you know, random patterns that you can change the, uh, you know, the scale of it, the uh, strength of it. And you see over here it's changing the strength. I also have the restrict frame range just to like smooth out the beginning and end. It just kind of makes it softer. So that's all that is. Um, so I just did that for all three of these and chose values that I liked. Um, so when you get final thing, the camera just kind of wobbles a little bit. It's kind of slow, but you can see the horizon doesn't stay level. And that's because of the, uh, the Y rotation, I believe. So that one's not quite as crazy as the X rotation, which is uh, also animated. So there's two keyframes on here with the noise on add so that uh, you you retain your keyframe uh, animation, but get some noise on top of that. And the Z location is just uh, like a bobbing up and down. Uh, if I look at the camera, yeah, see it's like going up and down, not just rotating so that it looks like it's on a boat or something in the in the sea. I think I went a little heavy on the Y rotation, I'd say. And maybe that whole animation is kind of slow. But, I mean, really, that's the whole scene right there. Um, I'll expand my outliner here real quick so you can see what I have. But do I have anything in hidden? No, I don't. That's just an empty collection. Um, yeah, so it's just this plane, which is the ocean modifier. And without the ocean modifier here, I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, it's on generate, so... Um, this plane is it does have geometry because I think I played around with this place but generate um, generate makes it, you see the whole shape is totally different it's generating its own mesh like it doesn't matter if I turn this off and I come into my plane and I select all of it except for these like few right here and and delete them uh, go to generate yeah and I'll get the same exact thing because yeah it's just based off these repeat patterns so um, not really anything fancy that's just built into the ocean modifier yeah so this is all of my objects um this plane 
the arc that the moon is on, which doesn't really need to be there, the light, the sun lamp, which adds a little bit of lighting. If I go into the camera and turn on the rendered mode, you know, choose the last frame or so. Turn that off. Yeah. So the, the light just adds that little bit of a highlight. And then the geo itself for the moon, um, which I just projected and mapped, which I guess I didn't show you guys. Um, you can just uh, hit U for unwrap. And you can do uh, project from view. And I did project from view. I don't think I did to bounds because that would distort it. And my, uh, my moon uh, image is not square. So I just did project from view. And that makes it, keeps it a circle. Um, yeah. And that's, I mean, that's really it. And the camera and the animation. Oh, and there's one more thing. Uh, the compositing was actually a big part of it. Um, so once you have a rendered image, I uh, rendered it with transparency in the background. And I also, I guess I didn't go over my uh, my background, which I did uh, just an 8K star image and adjusted it till it looks mm, pretty good. There's some, uh, I think this is for lighting. It's basically black. There's not really much else, but there's these stars that are, uh, track to the camera using generated coordinates going into my background uh, thing. It's just a custom node that runs it through a light path uh, camera ray, so you can kind of differentiate what what is in the background, what is actually casting light. Pretty simple there. Um, with the render, I have the image, uh, the alpha channel, the depth map. Let's see if I zoom out there. Mist pass, which I did set up. Uh, you can do that in from world settings, set up the start and end distance. Oh, and there, my compositing kicked in. An emission pass, which I didn't end up using, it looks like. And the environment pass, which is those stars I was talking about. So, um, yeah, I did a bunch of math here, uh, just playing around with mixing the mist pass and the alpha to get. Uh, just a mist that goes off without the moon in it because I think if I just use the mist pass It would be black up top here or not not the mist pass. Oh, yeah, the moon is Technically part of the mist um, But I wanted it to be like behind the mist so I did some fancy math here um, Not really fancy. I guess it's just trying to combine these two maps inverting it and I played around for a long time to get this map uh, which like basically goes off into the distance and then the sky is, oh, right. Cause the sky, I didn't want too misty. So, uh, basically it's only put mist right on the horizon. There is what this, uh, chain of nodes does. Uh, and then I'm mixing that with the image running through a denoise, get some of the noise out, uh, which zoom in. Yeah, so that puts the moon on top with the mist that I was talking about. And the mist is being generated with a uh, box mask. Uh, yeah, so it's just like slightly, slightly blue here. Actually, let me change this one to the viewer noted. It'll be easier. Um, yeah, so there's just a mask that's being blurred that is fading between black and this like blue color. And then that's being put in the background using the mist pass as a mask. So then uh, I just add some color correction, pretty simple, brighten everything up, add a bit of, uh, oh, add the stars in, that's what that is, add the stars on top, uh, glow all the stuff, get the nice glows all over the scene, there we go. And then I'm mixing that with the uh, color corrected image. And then this is a little bit of blur, just to soften edges and then a glare note to tie everything together that tends to sort of marry the image together um, because if you have the glare before the color correction and then you mix it it just kind of it there's like separate so this glow just kind of merges everything and then a hue saturation which just pumping up some values just like more color correction Lens distortion, obviously, very small amount of distortion and dispersion, and then the final color correction. And that's being applied to every single frame of the animation. Uh, so when I go into here, I just have it outputting to where I want it to go. 
and I have compositing uh, selected when I export. And that's the compositing. It might look a little complicated, this part especially <laughs> with the mist pass, but it was all just to kind of like fade the horizon and add the stars in the background. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, you can continue to watch this on this video a little bit or go to my social medias. Um, I think I have them linked in the description, so it should be in the newest post at the time of this video. And let me know if you guys want to see more of this kind of stuff, just quick breakdowns of scenes for, you know, the images and stuff I post on social media. Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks for watching.